What's up guys? So yesterday I made a video called Escape Doomer Life. And I noticed that as soon as I mentioned God, there was people that just sort of instantly backed up. And I got a lot of, uh, you know, backlash on, oh, you can't just recommend people become religious and people follow Jesus. And guys, listen. There are so many people that will hear what I'm about to say, and they've already got themselves into this, this atheist mindset that there's no God, and they all they know is like the Christian God and the God of the Bible. And so they instantly close up and they will have nothing to do with it. And this is what I'm, I need to tell you guys. First off, if you're willing to listen, I guarantee you that this mindset will change your entire life. Simple as that. Your worries will go away, your day-to-day -day anxieties, all the anger that you have, all the insecurities you have around girls, about your looks, about the future, it'll all start to fade away. Just like this. If you just take a second to understand, all right, you can't be closed off. I'm not asking you to believe in Jesus. I'm not asking you to become a Christian, to become a Muslim. I'm not asking you to, to become religious even a little bit. What I'm asking you to do is open your mind and let go of all these preconceived ideas that you've been given by your parents, by all these videos you've been watching on YouTube, and just let go for a little bit, all right? Let me speak to you as a friend. I'm not trying to criticize you. I'm not trying to condescend you. I'm telling you some stuff, bros, that has really helped me on my journey and set me free. All right, so first off, I want to take a step back and look at a while back, let's just say in the U.S., we had Christianity. People believed in God. And then there came a time, I'm not sure when, I would like to say from my own knowledge, like the 60s, the 70s, that people started dropping LSD and, and just uh, the internet, you know, coming around where it was sort of like, hmm, maybe... This is all a bunch of um, an illusion, believing in God. Um, we had science, you know, evolve and all these understandings. And uh, believing in God became like, whoa, that's a big leap of faith to say you believe in God. So now we have a bunch of these people that became atheists. And now that became the new norm. The idea to believe in God, any God, became out of the question. It was almost like you were dumb if you believe in God. All right, so this is prevalent mentality that even in 2009 is uh, more than ever, I would say. People have this idea that's that actually becomes a part of their ego that they are atheists. They have figured it out. They've watched a lot of videos. They've sort of done some thinking. Maybe they've read some philosophy or they read some you know, scientific books. They've already made up their mind. God doesn't exist. That's all there is. Okay. I've been there. I once took pride in that idea. I've seen my friends take pride in that idea. I've seen my brother, uh, you know, really defend that stance. There couldn't be God. There's just so many galaxies and planets and there's just, how dare you think there's a God and you're the center of the universe. It's such an egocentric idea, you know? All right. That's fine. I understand that. And what I've seen is that this idea really like just makes you more egotistic is that you have it figured out that there's no God. All right. So let me just pause here to regain where I'm at. So we were led to believe that there's no God. Okay. We're closed off. Now, when you get that idea in your head, what happens is now you have to do your own thinking and there is no one else that cares about you. There's no man upstairs. There's no heaven. There's no hell. Pretty good, you know. Don't got to worry about going to hell and burning forever. But there's no one that cares about you. There's. It's sort of just you, this puny little human, on your own. And you got to figure everything out. You got to figure out what you got to do for a career. You're fucked if you're not tall enough, if you're not good looking. You're never going to get a girl. Your life's pretty much bound to suck. This is taking the black pill, you know. A lot of you guys take the black pills. And uh, I know. I've been there too, man. 
and you say, oh, you're not, you're not under six foot or, you know, you don't look like this. It's listen, man, let me finish up where I'm going. All right. So you get this way of thinking, you start becoming a judge of the world. You start saying things aren't fair. I don't like the system. I don't like all the liberals. I don't like all the conservatives. I don't like how everything is run these days. I don't like how the job set up, the economy set up. I don't like how women nature is, female nature. They're just fucking, they're cunts. They're, you know, they're just, uh, I don't ever want to deal with a woman again. So we got, you know, a lot of guys looking at that and getting upset. And so we start having all these ideas and by not, so, so, so we start thinking that's what we were really doing. Uh, There's no God, no one else is in control, so we're in control. So we start thinking. And that right there, man, is uh, something that I think is starting to ruin us because we start thinking deeply into things. We start become nihilistic. We have these existential crises. A lot of us become depressed. We've gone through depression, some of us are in there. Some of us enter this, you could say this doomer lifestyle. Everything is meaningless. You wake up and the days reoccur. There's no getting out. It's all the same. You wake up, you make your coffee, you go on the internet, maybe you get out and go for a walk. But you know what? The winters are dark, man, and depressing. It gets cold. You maybe have one or two friends. You smoke weed sometimes. You try to do the no fat. You tried some self improvement. You tried lifting weights. At the end of the day, it's all meaningless. You don't feel good enough, so uh, you know it's it's crazy. You start getting weak. You start getting demoralized. You don't think you'll ever find a girl. You've already given up on marriage because fuck marriage. It's against a man. Guy can never win. It's just not fair. I know all this stuff, dude. You act like I'm I'm ignorant to this stuff. I could literally just shut down and give up. All right, but I understand a very important thing. That's what the world wants, is for you to be demoralized. They want you to lose all of your strength. They want you to become a shell of a man. They want you to be very weak and incompetent and incapable and just lacking in energy, dude. They do not want you to be a, a man or a leader. What ends up happening is if all the men become demoralized, they can't stand up for anything. The women end up leading. We see feminism rising up. And so what men do, we get angry, they start making all these laws. Let's just say in the long run, chaos ensues. Chaos prevails. There's things that men need to stand up because they know what works and what doesn't work. You know, our grandfathers had a lot of stuff figured out and all these, this progressive movement into the genders and all this, the, the females, um, the law, and just like giving them all the power. We see kids like, I mean, there's a lot of, you could say evil in the sense that it's just, it's like, what? You just look at it, you're like, what is going on? And we need men to be the ones to stand up. We need strong men that are seeking truth, seeking the right move. We need them in the government. We need them at the head of the house to be husbands, to be fathers. We need them for the community to be strong. And uh, it's just not, we're not seeing that because we're all getting demoralized. A lot of us. 20 mid 20s going into our 30s and it's scary stuff dude so i've realized with that the the biggest thing that a lot of us think is that we're missing something like when we're in this sort of this doomer uh, state this demoralized state we feel like we're missing something in our lives and a lot of you are like man i we've been sold this thing where you gotta make like a million dollars you gotta get you gotta chase hot girls, you got to have super good game. And uh, a lot of us, we really want to do that, but we feel like it's coming. And so like, it's just like, man, we get so, we get such a headache when the days are just the same and we don't get the really hot girl and we're not having sex and we don't have a super nice car and, and millions and stuff. And we're not going to Airbnbs and going on these nice trips. So we get even more depressed. And now it's just like, you know what? Fuck all this shit, dude. Get demoralized, man. That's, I literally don't even know how else to put it. And that's a bunch of nonsense. It's actually a lie that we've been fed. 
It's just a lie, dude. We and we constant when we go on social media, we see it even more. You guys, I'm telling you, like having sex is nice. It does not fill up that void. Getting the money is nice. Does not fill up that void. All right, you will have more problems once you start having sex. I can guarantee you, you're gonna start thinking if you got your girl pregnant, you're gonna start getting emotionally attached. Now you're having sex, but you become even you become beta. If you went your whole life looking for a hot girl, you get a hot girl, you become beta. You start getting emotionally involved. You start wondering what she's doing on the weekend. She's not taking. Now you gotta deal with that whole game. Unless you're fucking grounded in and abundant as a man. But how are you going to be like that if you're just complaining now as a dude? You get the money, then what? What are you going to do with the money? You, this is very critical, only a certain amount of comfort is, is, can even make you happy. Too much comfort, your bed's too soft, your spine starts to hurt, you start to feel lethargic, you eat a bunch of, you know, you end, you end up going and just spending money and going out to eat and stuff. It's like... Unless you are a badass dude now in your current state, and I mean you got some self-control, I guarantee you're going to spend that money on a bunch of nonsense, and you're going to become weak and soft. When you get too soft, there's like a quote by uh, Aristotle or something like, when the, you know, don't let the ground beneath your feet be warm, because then it makes you soft in your heart. It makes your character just weak. You know, that's why we're on this channel, we take cold showers and stuff, just so that you have some sort of some sort of uh, friction in your life to toughen you up. That's one of the things that I tell you guys to lift. And, and I don't tell you to lift just as this, as this gym cell, as this guy that is like, oh yeah, lifting will make all your problems go away. No, it fucking doesn't. But you know what it does? Lifting lifts your spirits. Because everyone's getting demoralized. You know how, you know, you think I care about the muscle, dude? The hour that I spend in the gym transfers into how I feel throughout the day. If I'm not going to the gym for a week, you better believe that I'm waking up with a cloud of depression over my head. I'm waking up, I'm more resentful, I'm filled with contempt, I'm more likely to judge, I'm filled with anger, and it's no way to live. Not even a little bit. So that's why I lift. I don't lift because I think that, and I want to tell you guys that, you're, you know, oh, if your looks are, you know, five and under, you better lift because that's the only way you're going to compensate and that's the only way girls are going to pay attention to you. No, dude, fuck that. All right. Do what you can. Get out of this thinking that you can't do anything about your looks because you can probably fix up. You can lose some weight. All right. You can't do anything about your height. Great. Find a girl that's your height or shorter. Simple as that. All right, I'm guessing a lot of you guys aren't under five three, but there's girls that are like under five foot. All right, I'm seeing a girl right now that's four nine, uh, not four nine. That's very that's a that's like midget, but uh, like four eleven. All right, so get that out of your head. Get that out of your head. There's girls out there. It's not helpless. It's your mindset that has become helpless. No wonder you've been demoralized. You've actually let this whole thing overtake you. You become just another drone. You be and you think and the funny thing is is that you think that you got here because you're knowledgeable and you're wise and you somehow have a higher IQ than everyone else. Blows my mind. Until you realize you've just been fooling yourself, homie. I was fooling myself. Now let me bring this thing all together. Is okay, so we stop believing in a God. I don't care. I'm talking about just a God. Now, the best way I can describe this is uh, understanding a long time ago, the Stoics, we've heard about Stoicism, everyone respects the, these philosophers, they had this idea that we're a part of the universe. And the universe will do whatever it wants. And so if my arm gets chopped off today, and I'm part of the universe, that that's okay. The Buddhists say that my suffering, the cessation of my suffering is attainable if I do not judge that. The cessation of suffering is attainable if I let go of that attachment of me being the judge, of me playing my own God as to, oh, woe is me. That, yeah, it fucking hurts. But even my idea of pain, my idea of how my life in the future is going to change, my idea of if anything goes wrong, 
in my life, I'm perceiving it as wrong. I become a judge for everything. Now it's like, I'm always going to suffer because I didn't get the girl. But what if you didn't need the girl in the first place? I'm going to suffer because I didn't get into that school. I'm making myself suffer. I don't have the, the looks that I want. I don't have the perfect jawline, the perfect cheekbones. My nose is a little too big. I have fat lips. You're suffering because you're making yourself suffer. It is That is the only truth. You And what happens is your ego rebels. It rebels because you've, it, you want to be unhappy. You're almost used to being unhappy. It's what fuels you to get up. You're just angry all the time. And so the Stoics realized that the universe does what it wants. We're a part of it. We're sort of like the universe experiencing itself, you know, and that, that actually is funny because that same thought leads a lot of people to become atheists or agnostic. And what I've realized, well, the universe is God. I don't know what, dude, do we even know what the universe is? There could be. Uh, the observable universe, and some people say this is a lie for them to trick you. The observable universe, they say a couple billion to 200 trillion, or 2 trillion, it's quite a gap, but let's just say 2 trillion galaxies in just the observable universe. We are one galaxy. We are one planet in one galaxy that has life on it. Imagine if there's 50 other life forms that exist within these two trillion galaxies. And we've been around since what, Lucy, about five, uh, I would say what, 50,000, 60,000 years ago, we started it, we found Lucy, we started to evolve into what we are now. In the last hundred years, we sent a man to the moon. We have a cell phone that I can come to you, I can talk just like this, you can tune in whenever you like. Imagine what one of those things that has been doing for it, one of these life forms have been doing for, Say they've been around for a million years. What does their technology look like? Maybe they've explored the whole universe. Maybe they figured out this whole question on their own. Maybe they have control of everything. Maybe we live in a simulation. So you better believe that when I say God, I don't believe in some man in the sky with a beard that cares about me and stroking my head at night and uh, you know just like wants the best for me. No, I, I honestly think that he, uh, he'll just let me go, dude. If I decide not to even acknowledge that there is something greater out there, that there is something that knows, not even knows what it's doing, but will do what it wants. How can my little puny peon brain decide that I'm gonna judge all of this and I'm gonna think about off in myself and I'm gonna br make people's lives worse. I'm gonna be angry because the anger somehow it's good for me, that this just doesn't make sense to me. All right, so I'm trying to paint this picture is that look, man, our whole walking away from God is simply a walking away from this stoic belief. It's a walking away from, from, this, from this, sim, this realization that we can give up our power. We can give up all the thinking we're doing because what does this thinking do, man? It leads us into the dump. It takes us to the grave. It makes the current world as good as it is. It makes it as miserable as it is and as isolated as it is for a lot of people. And all the suffering and even in the, the overthinking of religious texts, you know how these people, it, it divides us. It makes people drink the Kool-Aid to believe their own bullshit instead of just realizing I don't know anything. There's, I, I can, I, there's no past, there's no, there's no future. There's only now, there's only presence. And I believe that you come into this realization, you come into this, into understanding God, into develop, to developing a relationship with God when you come into his presence. And myself, I was born and raised in a family that is Christian. And so I was raised with obviously the Bible as my book. I think a lot of texts hold truths. I think that stories in themselves hold truths and the stories help us remember things. You know, a lot of, there's this common meme going around like a lot of the leftist um, NPCs use Harry Potter as a metaphor 
for their life. You know, you go to school, and I, don't, I never read Harry Potter, but I'm sure it's a fun book. But uh, the same thing with like Bible stories, you know, you, there's truth in these stories. And so, you know, a couple verses stood out to me, and that's why I use verses in some of my videos. But one of them stood out to me is come into my presence. The other verse is be still and know that I am God. And I think that when we be still, what we realize is that, you know, it's sort of like a meditation. I'm not my own God. I don't got everything figured out over here. So let me just be still for a moment and stop thinking. I mean, how often do we actually do that? We take a step back, we relax, and not sit, relax with a glass of wine or a cigar or get in, uh, you know, relax with a, something in our face with stimulus. How often do we just relax and be? Do we just be? Like nature, we just take a step back and just be, bro. Like the trees outside or the mountains, just be. We're always up here. And this thing lies to you all the time. And so you, when you just be, you're getting close to God. You're getting in his presence. And you're realizing that this is all there is right now. You will die one day. You know that. So there's no use suffering. There's no use to attaching yourself to all this outcomes, to thinking that you got everything figured out. And the most beautiful thing is that when this relationship starts to develop and your voice in your head starts to be silent, is you just have this feeling like everything's gonna be okay, man. You have peace. And I believe that's how God wants you to be. I believe if, you know, I believe that's how, that's how it's supposed to be, man. Because I know that I can't do it all. I can't figure everything out. I don't want to be miserable one day and happy the next day and then pumped up today, having a good relationship and then the next day. No, if I give up and I realize I suffer because of this thing, man, I'm going to have I'm going to have a good moment right now. I'm going to enjoy life. Life is going to be peaceful. I'm going to take it day by day. I'm going to stop being my own god. I'm going to stop judging people. I'm going to let go of the anger. I'm going to let go of all my hate that I have for everyone because I judge them all the time. And I think that that, that helps me. That's just, that's, just, uh, that's just making my ego even more. You got to let go of the ego. You got to stop attaching yourself to all these beliefs and opinions and acting like we know everything. You really got to get rid of it, man. You get rid of it by coming into his presence, coming into this presence that is now, you know, Practice the meditation like I told you guys. The breath sweeps the mind clean of all of this thinking that you're doing all this noise in your head. And that's it, man. And life starts getting better, better than you can ever believe. It's more peaceful. It'll just be like, wow, you're, instead of all this noise in your head, you just have these ideas just come to you. Boom. It's like that. It's like you're always in flow. You're always in flow. It's a perfect way to live. All right, guys, so I hope this message resonated with you, and I hope you bros are inspired and feeling good, all right? It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I promise you that. So I'll see you guys soon. Peace.